Jack Fetty program presented by Lucky Strike. <laughs> What do you think of that? Oh, she sure is pretty. Yeah. I wonder why they left out that cigarette tearing business. Oh, I guess they figured most everybody knows how to do it. Yeah, can you? Sure, it's easy. Go ahead, try it. You gotta start in with a lucky from a new pack. One that isn't all beat up. Okay, now find the seam. That's it. You gotta start at the seam. Now, tear it down the seam from one end to the other. How am I doing? Fine. Take your time, though. Don't dig into it or rough it up. Okay, now, lift out the tobacco. Real careful. There, you see? Anybody can do it. Yeah, sure. But what's it prove? Here's what it proves. See how the Lucky holds together without crumbling. A perfect cylinder of fine tobacco. Without loose ends that get in your mouth and spoil the taste. That's why Lucky's taste cleaner. And you'll notice there aren't any empty air spaces. Hot spots that burn too fast and give you a harsh, hot taste. No, because a Lucky is fully packed. See those long strands of fresh, mild, good-tasting tobacco. That's why Lucky's taste fresher. And lastly, that fine tobacco aroma tells you Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, naturally mild tobacco that's firmly packed, but so perfectly shredded it always draws freely and smokes evenly. That's why Lucky's taste smoother. Yes, Lucky's are made better. And because they are made better, they taste better. So, friends, for a cleaner, fresher, smoother smoke, be happy. Go lucky. Make your next carton Lucky Strike. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. I'm Jack Benny. <laughs> well, the reason I mention that is because CBS has just added a new station in Mexico, you see, and I look so much like Tito Gazar. <laughs> but you know, this is our third show, television show, and our last show, the one we did about four weeks ago, we did a play called Buck Benny Rides Again. And we had the most terrific response after that show. We got so many wonderful letters. Really, I, I can't tell you how many letters we got. And they were from such intelligent people, too, you know. As a matter of fact, I got one letter from a college professor. Did you know that execrable means lousy? <laughs> But anyway, here we are doing another show. Gosh, the way time flies, I can't get over it, you know. It just seems like, I don't know, it goes by so fast, you see. Here we are already, tomorrow, December 1st, then next week, December 8th, December 16th, and there's, uh... <laughs> then there's 106 days only till March 15th. <laughs> That's the government's Christmas. <laughs> I think I'll have to pay a lot this year, too, but then what can I do? I mean, you know, I'm too old to cry, and it hurts too much to laugh. <laughs> I was quoting Lincoln there. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, I, um... Now we want to get on with the show, and first of all, I'd like to introduce... Oh, before I introduce Bob Crosby, I must tell you that the last time Bob Crosby was on my show, I had never heard anybody complain as much as he did. You know, I had him singing a song right out here on, on the floor, you see? Then he complained because I didn't give him scenery. He's always complaining. Doesn't like the orchestra's salary. I never heard anybody complain as much as Crosby does. Really, I... I, frankly, I think his whole attitude is execrable. <laughs> so this time, I promised him that I'd give him some scenery. Oh, fellas, would you please let me have that curtain that I brought over this morning, that scene in the park? <laughs> A 
scene in the part, you see, so I got this in a theater down the street. And listen, fellas, will you please bring me that bench that I brought from the park last night? That bench. That's it. That's just... <laughs> I, um... I got this bench at Griffith Park. It's a bench, you know. And now, and now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to... Oh, kids. Well, kids, you can, you can go now. You know? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, Mr. Fletcher, this is Miss Thomas. Miss Thomas, what are you... nice if they meet, you see. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce the, uh... <laughs> uh, what is it? What is it, little girl? Huh? Mr. Benny, can I have your autograph, please? My autograph? Oh, well, that's sweet. I mean, but, honey, look at it. If you'll just wait until after the show, you know, I'm right in the middle of the show now, I'll be very, very happy to give it to you. Okay. Yeah, that's cute. It... Oh, wait a minute, honey, come back here. Come back. I mean, as long as you came up like this, I mean, it's cute. I I'll give you... Is this your little book here and everything? All right, come right over here. I'll give you the autograph. I'll be very happy to. That's cute, isn't it, coming up like that in the middle of the show? Yeah. What, what's your first name, honey? Margaret. Margaret. Huh? That's a pretty name, isn't it? I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll put to Margaret from Jack Benny. Huh? How do you spell that, honey? B-E-N-N-Y. <laughs> No, no, honey, look, look, I know how to spell my name. You understand what I mean? But, you know, there are different ways of spelling Margaret. You see, two different ways. How, how do you spell yours? M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T. Oh, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T, all right. To Margaret from Jack... Margaret, what's your last name? Truman. <laughs> Wait a minute, honey. Your name is Margaret Truman? Uh-huh. Well, I mean, that's a, that certainly is a coincidence, isn't it? I, your real name? That's your Margaret Truman? Uh -huh. Well, isn't that... I mean, you're not kidding me or anything. Oh, no, Mr. Benny. You're not. That's your right name, Margaret Truman. Well, isn't that cute? Okay, well, here you are, honey. Thank you. Oh, by the way, what, what's your... Uh, uh, what's your last name? Uh -huh. Truman. Truman, Margaret Truman. And, and do you live... You live here in uh, Los, Los Angeles, do you? No, sir. I'm only visiting here. I live in Washington. <laughs> in Seattle or Spokane or... Washington, D.C. <laughs> Wait a minute, honey. You live in Washington, D.C., and your name is Margaret Truman? Uh -huh. Well, that's the, that's the strangest thing I've ever heard. You're sure you're, you're not kidding me now? You didn't just come up here. Oh, no, Mr. Benny. You're not. That's your, Margaret Truman, and you live in Washington, D.C. Well, that's the oddest thing. I, really, I, have, you, have you lived in Washington long? No, sir. Where were you born? Independence, Missouri. <laughs> Now, wait a minute. You, you didn't want an autograph at all. You just came out to make fun of me. That's a... Oh, no, I didn't, Mr. Benny. Really, I didn't. Now, wait a minute. You see, your name is Margaret Truman. You live in Washington, D.C. You were born in Independence. I mean, those are too many coincidences. I, can't... I mean, does your, does, does, your father, does your father work in Washington now? Yes, sir, till January 20th. <laughs> I'm sorry I gave you the order. Your father's working now till January 20th. And that's no coincidence, huh? Now, wait a minute, honey. Somebody told you to say that. That's just a trick. Just... Oh, no, Mr. Benny. Huh? Nobody put me up to it. Huh? My name is Margaret Truman. I was born in Independence, Missouri. And the only reason we live in Washington, D.C., because my father works there. Oh. <laughs> Your father works there in Washington. What does he do? He's a piano player. <laughs> Father 
is a piano player in Washington. Well, may I ask you one more question? <laughs> may I? What is your father's first name? I won't tell you. <laughs> you won't tell me your father's first name? Why not? You'll think it's a coincidence. <laughs> I'm not going to get involved in this exactly. anymore. Exactly. Oh, hello, Bob. Hey, Jack, I was waiting outside for my introduction. What happened? Well, I, I got sidetracked here. Oh. Well, listen, I got your scenery for you if you want it. Do you like it? Is it? This is scenery? Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Well, Jack, when I asked for a park, I wanted a real park with people and statues and trees. Oh. Guys, this looks like King Farouk's bedspread. <laughs> this is the best I could get. So go ahead. Oh, by the way, Bob, I want you to meet the... This is Margaret Truman. Hello, honey. I'm... <laughs> Jack Benny. No, no, no. I'm not kidding. That's her name, isn't it, honey? That's her name, Margaret, Margaret... Margaret Truman? Yeah. Well, I'm awfully glad to meet you, Margaret Truman. I didn't recognize you without Jimmy Durante. <laughs> no, no, this is a different... This oh. is a different, different, oh. Mark. Well, come on, honey, you got your autograph. You want to come off? Come off, say... Say, Jack, what? I've got an idea. Because I don't have the right scenery, maybe I should switch my song. Yeah. And I saw Walt Disney's Peter Pan, and I think I could sing about it if you'd let me work with her. You mean you want to have the little girl if out I here could. on this... Would you like to stay here with Bob Crosby? Oh, yeah. You would? Okay. Okay. All right, Bob. I bet she sings, too. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Peter Pan? Yes, I heard that story a long time ago. Isn't he the little boy who wouldn't grow up? That's right. And Peter Pan lived in a world all of his own. He called it Neverland. Was he a brave little man? Oh, was he brave? You just listen. Peter Pan. Peter Pan. He's up, he's down, he's flying all around, a busy little man. When there's danger and the battle is thick, he's there in the nick of time. Are there pirates to fight? Are there Indians in sight? Peter Pan will have a plan to spike the crime. Oh, certainly would to Neverland, but in order to get there, they would have to fly. They couldn't fly. Oh, yes, they could. Let me tell you all about it. You see, Peter Pan had a little pixie by the name of Tinkerbell. And she would come and she would sprinkle some pixie dust over the boys and girls, and that would give them gossamer wings. And then they could fly? Well, only if they thought of pleasant things. Think of the presents you brought. Any happy little thought. Think of Christmas, think of snow, think of sleigh bells, here we go like reindeer in the sky. You can fly, you can fly, you can fly. What was that? Oh, you know who that is. Crocodile? That's right, the crocodile. What makes him tick like that? Well, once upon a time, he ate an alarm clock, and that's what makes him tick. Isn't that the crocodile that took a big bite out of Captain Hook? Yes, and he liked the taste of Captain Hook so much that ever after he went around looking for people to bite. So I've got to warn you, never, never, never smile at a crocodile. No, you can't get friendly with the crocodile. Don't be taken in by his welcome grin. He's imagining how nice you'd fit within his skin. Peter Pan, Peter Pan, he's in, he's out, he's zooming all about us, only Peter Pan, he's the best little boy, the worst little boy, since first little boys began, let him have his scheme, let him hold his dream. Peter Pan, Peter Pan, stay a little boy, my little man, my Peter Pan. Mr. 
Billy's residence, Star Stage Green Radio, and... Oh, Sam! Uh, no, Sam, no, I won't be able to go with you tonight. You see, the boss did his first TV, did his TV show today, and when he comes home after one of those, he's a wreck. Huh? You say some of the boys were down at the club watching his TV show, got tired of waiting and cut it off. What, what were they waiting for? Oh! Well, well, tell the boys I'll be on the next one. <laughs> oh, I gotta go now. Bye. Right. Right, uh, hello, boys. Just getting your room ready for the TV. Good, good. You know, I'm not even gonna have anything to eat. I'm going right to bed. I was never so tired in my life. <laughs> L S M F T. <laughs> oh boy, what an actor goes through. They think it's easy. Do one show a month. the show? Oh, oh, yes, boss. How'd you like it? I thought it was excellent. What? Excellent. Oh. <laughs> Say, Rochester, uh, how about that little girl? You know, the one that came out and asked me for an autograph, said her name was Margaret Truman. Wasn't that, wasn't that a coincidence? Oh, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Show me her father was a piano player. She lived in Independence, Missouri, and her father was going to work until... Until the 20th of January? Well, that could happen. What do you mean that could happen? That's silly. Well, that's... I, that, that really is a coincidence. But no, 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 I don't know, boss. Now, now, take me, for instance. Yeah? My name is Rochester, and I was born in Rochester, New York. I know, I know. Uh, I, I got a brother named Toledo. He was born in Ohio. Oh, good old Toledo. Yes, I know. <laughs> Then I got a cousin. His name is Missoula. He was born in Montana. Missoula? Mm-hmm. And I got another cousin named Duluth. He, he was born in Minnesota. No kidding. Uh, Duluth born in Minnesota. Well, what do you know? I'm just going to brush my teeth. I'll be right back. I want to get right to bed. All right. <laughs> Hello? Minneapolis? Is that long distance? No, another cousin. How do you talk to him later? Uh, oh, this is she. Well, you'll talk to her later then. Okay. I'll call you later, Minnie. Goodbye. <laughs> Rochester, look at the next time. The next time I ask you to buy me some pajamas, for heaven's sake, will you do me a favor? Well, boss, I, I think they're beautiful. Oh, a little beautiful. Saturday, but beautiful. Oh, fine. <laughs> I'm going right to bed. Boy, I'll be asleep before I hit that pillow. Okay, I'll, I'll turn off the light. Okay. Good night, boss. Good night, Rochester. Oh, boy, am I tired. <laughs> boy, it's got... Oh, boy. Feels good to be in bed. <laughs> I wonder what Minneapolis's last name is. <laughs> well, I'm not going to worry about it now. Let me get to bed.
to fix that dripping faucet. Now listen. <laughs> oh, it's stop. Well, you can go back to bed then. Yes, sir. <laughs> Good night, Mark. Good night, Rochester. Stopped again. Hey, wait a minute. I got an idea. Come here. Okay. <laughs> Good night, boss. Good night, Rochester. <laughs> I know it. I know it. I know it. I won't fix, fix that that part. Yes, well, boss, you better try to get some sleep. How can I sleep now? I was sleepy a few minutes ago. Now I'm wide awake. The only way I'll fall asleep, Rochester, we'll have to do what we always do. Oh, boss, that's too much trouble. I don't care whether it's trouble or not. That's the only way I'll get to sleep. All right. Thank you. I forgot to take a dram of me. I'd like to see the size of the mother and father. This looks like a pretty fancy house. We ought to do pretty good here. Hey, Lefty. Look, a silver ashtray. Open a bag. There you are. <laughs> Why do you like that? It's nailed down. Played for Notre Dame. <laughs> Let's see what's in this drawer. Hey, what is I don't know. Stand aside. Hey, look! Look at these beautiful shoes. Not that. Boy, these are all right. Hey, man, these are real good. Hey, you know what this job is really going to be okay? <laughs> Where do them shites go? You want to try the other doors? No. <laughs> Boy, this is a tough place. Thanks is easier. Thanks? Yeah. Yeah, but that's Grandma's territory. <laughs> Let's 
see what's in here. Boy, I worked on a lot of jobs, but none as execrable as this one. I know there's a safe in here someplace. Let's find it. A safe? Yeah. Well, let's look. Here we are, a safe. Hey! Let's get out of here! <laughs> What's the matter? The window's stuck. The window's stuck? Yeah. Let me try it. <laughs> hey! Look in there. A coin slot. A coin slot. To open window, deposit 25 cents. <laughs> Friends, it's true, you know. Luckies are made better to taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. And you remember that the next time you buy cigarettes. It's awfully important because, golly, in a cigarette, it's the taste that makes the difference. And Luckies do taste cleaner, fresher, smoother. So come on, be happy, go lucky, make your next carton Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know whether you like the show or not. I know I took it lying down. <laughs> kind of a show I like where you don't have much to do, you know, you just... Incidentally, were the burglars funny? Oh, the reason I don't know is because I, I fell sound asleep. <laughs> anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I, I do hope you like the show, and we'll be back again four weeks from today. Is my time up now? Because huh? I'd like to tell them. Uh, can, I, can I talk just a second more? Oh, well, I just want to tell you that on, on, on uh, the next show... We're going to try and do one of our New Year's fantasies. Remember the ones we used to do always on radio? And it's a sort of a semi, you know, comedy and dramatic thing, which I hope you'll enjoy. And anyway, we will see you then four weeks from today. Thank you very much. This is the CBS Television Network.